Welcome to the new season of Meso TV. Meso TV is a program of the Mesothelioma Applied Research Foundation and is made possible thanks to the generous support of our sponsors. To learn more about our sponsors, please watch the following message. My name is Kelly Batley. My name is Clay Thompson. My name is Neil Mowney. We are MRHFM, a national firm with 70 attorneys and 11 offices across the U.S. At MRHFM, we exclusively help mesothelioma patients and their families. It's all we do. This is why we are proud to sponsor the Mesothelioma Applied Research Foundation and its work to fund mesothelioma research and provide support services and education for patients and their families. Hi, my name's Joe Bellick, and I'm the founding partner of the Law Offices of Bellick & Fox. We support the mesothelioma community by providing first quality legal representation to mesothelioma patients and their families. During these troubling times, we're proud to support the Mesothelioma Applied Research Foundation so they can continue the work that they do every day on behalf of mesothelioma patients and their families. Hi, Berkeley. Thank you for um, being on Meso TV tonight with me. Um, we're going to be talking about the ABCs of CBCs, but I'd first like you to introduce yourself to everybody. Absolutely. Thank you so much for inv inviting me. It's such a pleasure to be a part of this foundation. Um, I am Berkeley Opalecki, and I am the Ambulatory Oncology Clinical Nurse Educator at the University of Chicago. So thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, so tonight we're going to talk about breaking down kind of what a CBC is for our patients so that they can understand what they're looking at and what their doctors are talking about when they're going over them with them. Um, let's just start with talking about what is actually a CBC. What does it stand for and what are they looking at? Yes. Yeah, so a CBC is a complete blood count. And what it comprises of is different cells that are made by the bone marrow that help support the immune system as well as carry oxygen to different organs of the body. And it's crucial in giving the provider information on how um, an individual is handling their treatment, specifically chemotherapy. Wonderful. And when we break down the CBCs, because there are a lot of parts to it, and I kind of wanted to talk specifically about the CBC with a differential. Um, just so patients know there are two different types. You can have just a complete blood count and also a complete blood count with a differential. Um, but mostly when you're on chemotherapy, they do use that differential as well um, to see how you're tolerating the treatment. So breaking that down, um, what are the main components of the CBC that we're looking at? So the different components of the CBC the important areas that we look at are something called the WBC or white blood cell count, as well as the ANC or absolute neutrophil count. And generally speaking, the absolute neutrophil count gives the treating team a picture of how pretty much most of the white blood cells are functioning in the immune system and their ability to fight any kind of infection. So um, the white blood cell, the WBC, that's a total blood count. Um, that's looking at the total white blood cells within, the, within that blood sample. Um, and then the ANC, which is the absolute neutrophil count, that's looking at actually what, how many neutrophils are within that white blood cell count, correct? Correct. Perfect. Um, and then it also looks at your red blood cell count as well. Um, and what are the different parts of that that we're kind of looking for? We're looking at two um, important areas. The first is the hemoglobin or on your lab values, it could say HGB. And so what that stands for and represents are oxygenated red blood cells that are transported to all the different organs in the body and help organ function. And that is important for providers to look at. So that way they know, again, whether or not your bone marrow is making enough red blood cells to feed all the organs in your body. The next area that's important is the platelet count. And the platelets help the blood clot to prevent bleeding. Um, so those are two key areas that we really look at. Great. 
And then I just also wanted to make note for um, any of the patients that when a lab analyzes the blood counts, um, they do vary as far as what the normal ranges are. Um, so if they have it drawn from one institution versus another institution, uh, there may be some vari variance as to what is normal and what's abnormal. Um, it's small, but they do vary somewhat. Um, then I just kind of wanted to talk about what do these mean for somebody that's undergoing chemotherapy? Um, you know, we know that chemotherapy can lower a patient's blood counts. Um, and as you said, specifically the WBC and the ANC. Um, but when we're looking at an ANC, what are we really looking for? When we look at the ANC or absolute neutrophil count, we're looking to see specific representation of how your body can handle fighting an infection. And so the absolute neutrophil count that usually tells us that it's safe to give treatment is anything above 1.5. And depending on the clinical situation, sometimes providers are okay with a value of 1.0. And so if those are too low, that tells us that you're neutropenic, uh, meaning that you are much more at risk for infection and what we call immunocompromised. And so when that happens, you could, any kind of infection that your body would normally fight off no problem could turn into something really nasty. And so the things that can happen when you're neutropenic are you could develop a fever, Typically, anything over 100.4 or 100.5 degrees Fahrenheit is something you should definitely alert your treating team to. The other things that can happen, um, chills, um, sometimes shortness of breath, um, or overall kind of a fluish feeling or a fatigue or tiredness can sometimes happen. And so it's really important to just have open discussions with your treatment team about what your values are. And if they tell you you're neutropenic, that is likely what they're referring to. Great. And I kind of wanted to talk a little bit about um, if patients happen to hear the word nadir, um, because that is a big word uh, when you're on chemotherapy. Um, and it pertains to um, your, your blood counts and your CBC values. So what is the nadir um, when patients are going through chemotherapy? Absolutely. So a nadir is where the chemotherapy is at its highest peak at its level in your blood. And what happens then is that your bone marrow is suppressed at the highest rate it will while you're receiving chemotherapy. And when your absolute neutrophil count will be at its lowest. And so typically when we look at nadir or your treating provider looks at nadir, they use that in their treatment decisions in regards to how they would give you your next cycle of treatment um, and whether or not it's safe to give you treatment. Great, and I know that um, for people undergoing therapy, a lot of times, you know, they say nadir is somewhere between seven to 14 days. Sometimes it's between 14 to 21 days. And again, that is why they um, do the cycles as they do. So um, in every three week cycle, sometimes in every four week cycle, depending on what type of chemotherapy you're on. Um, and as you had said, uh, when you're on your nadir and you're at your lowest point and you are neutropenic, um, you always want to, you know, let your oncologist know if you're having any of those symptoms of chills, um, sore throat, mouth pain, um, urinary tract pain, um, blood in your urine, things like that, um, coughing or shortness of breath. Um, definitely big things that you want to alert your oncologist to. Um, and then once you, you do usually come out of that nadir, um, and so then that's usually when you are getting ready to have your next treatment cycle. Um, as far as the red blood cell counts go, what does chemotherapy do to those as well? So chemotherapy can lower what we previously called hemoglobin. And so when that happens, like we said before, the hemoglobin is the oxygenated red blood cells that carry oxygen to the different organs in the body. And so when that value is low, 
typically the symptoms someone might experience are shortness of breath, tiredness, sometimes a headache or dizziness. And so depending on the clinical, the clinical judgment of your provider, some patients with mesothelioma in general might be what we call anemic or have a chronically low hemoglobin. And so everyone's normal might sit in a different area, just depending on what their baseline was prior to treatment. And so really, if you're experiencing those symptoms, that could be a sign, no matter what your baseline or your normal value typically is for you, that uh, you might need to see your treating team and it may, you may potentially need some kind of supplemental or supportive um, transfusion. And then as far as the platelets go, those were the other component that we talked about. Um, a chemotherapy can also lower those. So what are we looking at um, when the platelets go low? When the platelets are lower, the symptoms that someone might see, they might not see any symptoms at all. Sometimes the platelets can dip below the normal value for their institution and we just monitor them. Um, and there's no symptoms and we just, you know, watch them. And sometimes they recover on their own after the end of each cycle. If they're really low and it, this is, it's very rare that we would ever transfuse platelets for chemo, standard chemotherapy for mesothelioma. Very, very unlikely, although there are rare circumstances. But typically, when the platelets drip, dip lower, um, we would just monitor them. Um, symptoms that you really want to look out for, indicating that they might be at an unsafe low level, would be bruising, um, bleeding, um, and or a nosebleeds might be something else you experience. Um, again, a headache so or dizziness. So just different things to look out for. Um, so just very crucial to be in tune with your body and also have open discussions with your treatment team about those values and what they mean for you. Thank you so much for that. Um, I also wanted to talk a little bit about, um, you know, it's, we're, we're talking about these CBCs and mostly they are affected by chemotherapy. Um, and we do have patients that are on immunotherapy as well now. Um, and also we have some clinical trials looking at immunotherapy in combination with chemotherapy. Um, but talk a little bit about the differences um, with the immunotherapy and the chemotherapy um, on the CBCs. Yes, so the current immunotherapies that are approved um, by the FDA and also immunotherapies that are in clinical trials, the way that they work, uh, their mechanisms of, action, mechanisms of action and the pathways they target do not cause neutropenia or anemia or any of those things that we discussed chemotherapy can. With that being said, there are, again, you know, there are some rare circumstances that we have seen um, those impacted. But generally speaking, for most patients, um, neutropenia and anemia and these other things we discussed in low platelets are not a side effect of the immunotherapies. However, if you're on a clinical trial with a combination of chemotherapy and immunotherapy, there's still definitely things that would be monitored how we would if you were receiving standard chemotherapy. So if you're receiving the combination of both standard chemotherapy and immunotherapy, again, we would still be monitoring you for those things, the low neutrophils, the low hemoglobin, the low platelets. So definitely um, very different now that we have a lot of new, very cool treatments available, um, but just really important to know the differences in the side effects. Absolutely. And it's always really good for patients to be able to keep a copy of their um, blood count so that they can see the different trends and see um, when they are at their lowest while they're on treatment. Um, and then when they start to recover and that way they know, um, you know, when to look for fevers or um, when to look for those certain neutropenic things that we do see um, so that they can keep their oncology team advised. Um, thank you so much. Do you have anything to add today? I think that you did a really wonderful job of covering this for us. 
thank you very much. Thank you for having me. And I am so glad we could review this for all of you um, and for our mesothelioma community. Knowledge is power, and this will give you an understanding of the treatments you're receiving, their side effects, you know, what those vet lab values mean so you can have an active role in your treatment. So thank you very much. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thanks for being with us tonight. We really appreciate it.